I feel like with this film, I said everything I had to say. Like, it doesn't feel like I have anything left to say about romantic comedy. What made you pick yourself as the main actor? Oh, well, that's kind of a simple answer. Um, you know, when I was like two years into writing the script, and you know, I was writing the script for about like three and a half or four years, but two years in, um, I spoke to my father, who is one of the executive producers, and I was getting nervous about acting in a feature film. Which I had never acted professionally before. Um, I said to my dad, you know, maybe should we possibly consider casting someone else as Benjamin Glass? And my dad immediately responded, no way. He says, I'm not doing the movie unless you're starring in it. And I was like, okay, well, that makes my choice pretty easy then. Yeah. <laughs> you know, after I saw the movie, this was almost like Bruce Willis in Die Hard. No one else could have played that role but you. Okay. I'll take that as a compliment. Yeah, as a compliment. Also, Thank you. Um, that's what my dad felt too. He said we, we wouldn't be able to get someone who, who could do it like me. Yeah, no, you were like uh, just so perfect in it. Seriously. Thank you. What was the biggest challenges on actually doing this whole film besides you being the actor, director, writer, and editor? An editor. Um, hairstylist. <laughs> not hairstylist. Well, I, I mean, it sounds like a lame answer, but. In, in Q and A's, people ask me that, and I always say it was everything. Like every single second of the movie was hard. It you know it making the movie from start to finish was four and a half years of hard work, and it was all hard. How'd you get uh, Eric Roberts and Rosie Perez? Um, well, with Rosie Perez, you know we thought she would be perfect for the role of the psychiatrist, but you know. I thought that that her role was not significant enough in my script for a star like her. So I went back to the script and I spent three months rewriting the psychiatrist to make her a more, much more important character in the story. Like not just more screen time, but also like has more um, an effect on the story. Um, and then before we went to Rosie Perez and then we went to her and she loved the script and then she wanted to speak to me on the phone and see my latest works. So, uh, so I sent her my, my th thesis short film from college and when I was on the phone with her for the first time, I was just like so nervous. I was so nervous. I was like panicking practically because she hadn't said yes yet. And I was like, I was very starstruck also. Of course, it's Rosie Perez. And uh, Eric, we thought he would be really perfect for the role of uh, Montgomery Pennington. And I, I think he's very funny in the movie. I mean, he gets a lot of laughs. And every time I watch it, I laugh because he's hilarious. One thing I loved about your film is this one thing that's important to me in all films, the pace of it. Like, it just gets to, it gets to points really fast. There's a lot of quick cuts. It just really flows. So, what... How do you feel about the way you, being the editor and the director, that helped the pace of the movie really go? Um, it, it happened in all three stages. It happened in the writing, in the directing, and the editing, in terms of deciding how the pacing was going to be. You want to start the scene at the latest point possible, and then cut, uh, cut the scene out at the earliest point possible because anything before that or after that is not essential and you want the story to be you want every frame of the movie to to matter and into i mean it's it's true what quentin tarantino said in this editing documentary i watched he said that every single frame is like a note in a melody it really is that important so you know you have to sometimes the way to make it seem like it's going by faster and you're enjoying it, sometimes that's achieved by actually slowing down the cuts to make the scene work. So it's not necessarily always fast cuts that makes it do that. It's sometimes it's slowing it down that does it. Gotcha. Here's another compliment question. How come, and this is gonna be actually for Eric Roberts too, but mostly for him, but now I decided to make it for you. How come big studios can't make a good little film like this, like you did? Oh, 
because they're all making superhero movies <laughs> mostly and then the indie films are, that they're making are like indie films with like 60 million dollar budgets with scarlett johansson adam driver and the, those are like indie films but sort of not um so what kind of advantage? I, well, you so have? this kind of movie, you know, I think they don't think it makes any money. So, and you know, they they would probably be right. I mean, because this kind of an, an indie film like this could not, you know, do well in movie theaters. But we do have um, we do have a lot of optimism about how it's going to do on video on demand and streaming. Uh, which we're gonna do soon, and uh, I think that's gonna really, I think that will come out really well, actually. You but know, I I consider this film kind of like Fault in Your Stars, that film. You know, it didn't do, it did okay in the theaters, but it did really well on the back end. I think your film, this film has the potential to be that kind of like a great love story film to be kind of cultish and last. I just feel so lucky that I got to make this film, and then, and then I can put it online, and potentially like a lot of people could see it. Um, uh, I really wanted to tell this story, so it feels really great to show it to people. Yeah, well, you get down in this film. <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, I'm not trying to give it away, but you know, you really, you get some pretty cool scenes. Yeah, I mean, there's scenes where my character is like manic and euphoric. Mm, or, that's not what I meant. Oh, what do you? What do you what? I meant like the, you know, the, the very intimate scenes. Those are the scenes that I'm talking about. That you know, you got down. You really got. You know, you got into it. It made the it made the film deep and right, right. Yeah. Like, like scenes in the psych ward, or like the scene with the dad in the car after the paintball things well, like the, that. The scene of you guys in bed. Oh yeah, when my when <laughs> when my character Ben um, reveals something about himself to Emma that he hasn't told anyone. Um, yeah, I mean, I I honestly I, like I rehearsed that. It was like a mini monologue I had. Um, I rehearsed that for many hours, for many days, actually, because I was struggling with it, and I knew I was. So I was, I was getting acting coaching, and I was working a lot on that monologue because when I started doing it, it just sucked. <laughs> so, you know, but, but, you know, I was, but I worked hard, you know, to to get it up to an honest place, you know, actually in that, you know, mo you counterintuitively you would think that a serious monologue like that where you're revealing something really um, personal about yourself that you could be very vulnerable you would think that the actor would be like okay I'm supposed to be sad or something but I did it in a way where I was actually trying to entertain you know my character I was trying to entertain Emma Taylor even though I was talking about something so serious because because if, when I went with the grain of the text, it, it, it read as faulty, but when I went against the grain of the text, like, hey, isn't it cool that I did this? Like, it just became more intimate and more truthful. On your next film, it's like, well, now that you, things that happened in that film, the mistakes, the weather, who knows? I know things happen on films. It's, it's part of the way it goes. So what, did you do, what are you gonna do now differently, you think? The next, the next project I'm working on, I, it's too early to say anything about it, but I can tell you that I ordered 60 sci-fi novels on Amazon, and I'm reading them. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I meant like the details. Like, I mean, are you are you going to use different kind of cameras? Are you going to be not the writer next time? Are you going to be not the you know? What are you going to like? Well, I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm going to. Well, I one one thing I learned with this uh, movie Inside the Rain is that no one will come to you with like a silver platter and say, "Here's a, an amazing script and here's an amazing cast. Here's an amazing like." If you don't have the money then you gotta do it all yourself. I mean, that's the reason why I did write, wrote, directed, starred, and edited. I mean, we looked for editors, but none of them you know, that we could afford who were free were, weren't very good. I didn't like their reels, so I was like, against the producer's wishes, I was like, I'm editing this because I know I could do a better job than they can do it. Well, yeah, like people are saying like, oh, you make another rom-com, blah, 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 you know? Um, and, I'm not sure like I want to do another rom-com right now because I feel like with this film 
I feel like with this film, I said everything I had to say. Like, it doesn't feel like I have anything left to say about romantic comedy. Um, no, I, do your sci-fi. Yeah, so, but I'm just, so all, all I can say, though, is that I've ordered 60 sci-fi novels because uh, I consider it research because um, I'm really trying to immerse myself in it. I'm interested in making a feature film or doing a, a, or doing a TV show. Um, so also I would um, you know be writing a TV show because I don't want to be a gun for hire necessarily on TV shows, which is what they do. Like I'd rather be the, the, the person running the show, which is always the writers. So if I was doing TV, I'd want to be the main writer 